and welcome to this Tech Talk on Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express. Um, this is the first of three Tech Talks on CME. Um, in this particular Tech Talk, we're going to be talking about how to deploy CO, CUCME, I'm just going to call it Call Manager Express, um, how to deploy CME on a router. We're going to stand up SIP CME, and we're also going to stand up Skinny CME. Now, you may think to yourself, well, why would I need Skinny CME on my router. Um, you can see in session number two that we're going to be deploying transcode and conference resources. That is done through Skinny CME. Now, you don't have to deploy uh, Skinny phones, but you're going to have to at least know how to do the basics of Skinny CME. So we're going to be talking about that. Um, so the transcode and conference resources is later today. And then the CUCM features are going to be tomorrow. So let's get started. In this particular session, again, this is about deploying CUCME itself, uh, router level prep, in particular SIP, there are some global commands that need to be in place, some SIP specific commands that need to be in place before you start deploying CME. We're going to look at deploying um, SIP CME, and there are more commands that you may think just to get really the basics working properly. Um, most of these, by the way, also apply to SRST deployments, if you are thinking about that. Um, and still, I am going to be covering, by and large, the basics. There are you know, a lot of subtleties that you can really dig into if you want to. Um, we are going to configure Skinny CUCME. Um, and again, you know, deploying the basics, we are going to be deploying some Skinny devices, so I'm going to flesh that a little bit more. Uh, because then we are going to deploy SIP and Skinny devices. So here we go. So in order to get SIP CUCME running, there are some commands that you have to have in place to make everything go properly. For starters, um, under voice service VoIP, allow connections SIP to SIP. When a Skinny phone registers to CUCME, the CUCME process will create a virtual dial peer, uh, a POTS dial peer, for the DNs on that phone. When a SIP device registers with SIP CUCME, the DNs on that device are going to register as VoIP dial peers. Now, as we know, default behavior on a Cisco router is that an inbound VoIP dial peer is not allowed to use an outbound VoIP dial peer, so guess what? If you don't have this command in there, your phones will register, but they can't call each other. So very, very important. Then um, under SIP itself, you do need to bind SIP to an interface. Wherever you're going to be binding it, um, you're going to want to have that same IP address be the core IP address for the CUCME, CUCME process itself for SIP. It can be the same IP as that used for skinny CUCME or a different one. Um, and you do want to bind it globally. Uh, this does not prevent you from binding SIP to a specific interface. Um, for instance, if you have an IT service provider you know, providing a SIP trunk for PSTN access, um, you can still on that dial peer, uh, you know, bind SIP on that dial peer to a specific like external interface. Very, very important, registrar server. SIP phones need to talk to a registrar server in order to register. This provides that service on this router. That is required, by the way, again, if you're going to, be going to be deploying SRST, you need that command in there as well. Otherwise, the phones will go to uh, the router for um, registration services and the router will reject it. And then finally, session transport TCP. The SIP phones want to use TCP to do their registration and especially call setup um, uh, processes. You can bind uh, the TCP for session transport to each individual phone in SIP, um, but it's just as easy to do it up here, especially in production environments, that's not a bad idea. And again, like with binding um, SIP to a specific interface, if your service provider wants you to have uh, session transport UDP on a PSTN SIP trunk, for instance, this command does not prevent you from binding session transport UDP on that specific dial peer. So global commands required. 
for SIP additionally, you do have to declare the SIP UA. The CUCME router is going to be participating in setting up and tearing down call legs. And especially if you are also deploying Cisco Unity Express for voicemail, uh, CUCME is going to be anchoring um, you know, calls between the source and destination of call. So it has to participate. So you have to have this command in order for your phones to function. The rest of these commands are sort of just nice to have for SIP itself. How many times am I going to retry an invite message before I decide to do failover or whatnot? Uh, how many times uh, should registration messages be attempted? Um, the timers normally are 200 milliseconds. We're going to make that shorter for, again, you know, uh, responses to various messages. This just speeds up uh, SIP itself. And you know, whether you're doing a CUCME or not, those sorts of commands can be very helpful if you have SIP deployed on your router. So let's start by um, including those two commands in uh, our router. So I do have a um, router up here, right? And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the commands out of my uh, PowerPoint presentation here. I'm going to just paste them right in. So config T, right? There's my registration messages and whatnot. Then I'm going to go down to the SIP UA messages and do those. So there we go. OK. All right, so that gets the system ready, the router ready for SIP. What do I need to do to deploy SIP CUCME? Here is our set of commands. Voice register global turns on CUCME. Mode CME as opposed to SRST. There's licensing involved in that source IP address. Now again, this would be the IP address that you bound SIP to globally, but um, you know, there, there's, there's some wiggle room in that. Read the documentation if you need to specifically not bind SIP globally. There's some other things you can do to make this work, but this is sort of the recommended practice. The port 5060 is not something you have to type in, but that comes with, but it does use port 5060. Can you do secure CUCME and secure um, SRST for SIP, absolutely. And then of course you'd be using port 5061. 100% required fields, max DN, how many uh, directory numbers for SIP phones is this particular router going to support? And how many phones themselves? In SIP CUCME, phones are represented by pools. That's just what the, they name it. Um, and this says, you know, how many devices am I going to support? The defaults are zero, which means does not work. So you must have those commands. Those four commands right there are your bare minimum. Other things I can add. Time zone. The SIP CUCME process will pick up the time zone on the router itself, but if you would like to declare a different time zone, you can. Time zone and then just space question mark and you'll see all the time zones in the system. Um, that can be helpful if your um, routers are like on UTC, but you would like to have you know, local time show up on phones and whatnot. Dial plan pattern. And the way this works is dial plan pattern a tag number, you can have more than one of these patterns. Hey, router, if you see this particular pattern come in as a call setup request, that belongs to me, the CUCME process, and my extension lengths are five digits. This, what this is doing is taking your inbound DIDs and truncating them to your five digit extension numbers, your DNs. You can do this also with um, uh, voice translation profiles, but this is a really easy way to get CUCME to do it for you with a minimum of fuss. If you have more than one DID block, again, you can have a dial plan pattern too. If your service provider is sending you things in E164 format, there are a couple of other commands that you can add to uh, you know, make, make that basically work properly. NTP server. If you are familiar with SIP phones, um, it, and this is true for call manager as well, SIP phones will get their time from call manager in a call manager environment um, using the timestamps on messages exchanged with CUC, CUCM. But 
again, the recommended practice in many cases for SIP phones in a call manager environment is to have a specific NTP source for the phones themselves. There's a menu item for it in call manager. This is doing effectively the same thing. You're making sure that the phones go to a specific place for time. And uh, what mode you're gonna be using here is gonna depend on your specific um, setup in your network. Camera, video. I'm declaring this globally so that CUCME will support um, video cameras. Like I, I have 9971s I'm gonna be registering um, via SIP and video works. Uh, you can uh, declare it globally. Again, you can also declare it on a per device basis. The recommendation again is both. This just says that CUCME is gonna support it. Then you have to tell which devices are gonna also support it. And then finally, authenticate register. And there are some additional commands. Again, there's realm commands and whatnot. The authenticate register command is if you have phones that are not locally configured, they can't get directly through um, to your CUCME process, they're on a different IP subnet or something like that, then this can be helpful to make sure that your um, devices are, um, you know, um, able to authenticate properly. Again, read the documentation for some of the subtleties there. I have many, many times not included this command in my CUCME deployments because my phones have all been local to the CUCME router itself which, you know, and then you don't necessarily need that as much, but there you go. So again, um, I'm going to go ahead and um, add these into my system. Um, I am going to start with the basic ones. So the voice register global, mode CME, max pool, max DN. Let me just go ahead and paste those in. Great. And then let's take a look at time zone. So time zone. And then question mark. And again, you can see the different time zones here. Um, I am going to be choosing time zone six, just you know, to sort of uh, point out you know why you're doing this. Um, but if you don't have this command in there, the phones will just have the timestamp of the router itself, which, as it happens, happens to be Mountain Time anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and say time zone six. And then next is my dial plan pattern command. I'm going to go in this far only and extension link five. And I just want to do a question mark here and show you some of the other things that you can add on here. I mentioned about E164 numbers. That's the um, demote um, and no reg. That especially is true if you still have some H323 in your, next, in your um, uh, system. And the extension pattern is my DIDs are 521, 555, and then four additional digits. If I needed to overwrite, like maybe my extensions are five digits, but they start with a seven and then four digits. I need to overwrite that last five, right, in that, that pattern. Then you could do that. I could say seven dot, dot, dot. And then instead of my extensions being five digits starting with a five, they'd be five digits starting with a seven. Okay. And then we're going to include the rest of these. Not hard ones. Oops, that doesn't have a proper carriage return now, does it? That's why it looks funky in my system. All right, here we go. Let's try that again. There we go, okay. Now, one of the things I can do at this point is do a show command, specifically show um, voice register pool, uh, voice register global, sorry, bah. And that will tell me a little bit more about what I've got going on. You know, what is my uh, port? Where's my NTP server? What time zone do I have? Um, I didn't include these commands today, but you can, which is, do I want 12 or 24 hour time clock? Do I want the date format? You know, standard US stuff is month, day, year, but maybe I'm in, you know, Quebec and I need day month year, or maybe I'm in a military base and I want year month day. So you get to choose that sort of thing. Notice the uh, MWI commands. I did not include those because I don't have a Cisco Unity Express implementation, but those are some additional things I can do. It is possible to alter the standard QoS settings. Network locale and user locale. This has to do with 
what um, call progress tones do I want to hear? That's another thing that you can you can um, see. I also want to show TFTP files are not created and active registrations are currently zero. Now that makes sense because I don't have any phones registered, but what is that TFTP files are not created? When a phone registers to call manager, the phone will download a config file from the TFTP server. Phones are phones. They need to download uh, files from the TFTP server in CU CME as well. And this means that the files have to be created. Now, I haven't built the phones yet, but when we do finish building the phones, we have to go back into Voice Register Global and issue a command called Create Profile. That Create Profile says, OK, uh, reset all of the config files, go. And uh, so we'll see that when we get there. All right. We have Call Manager Express for SIP up and running. Now, what about Skinny? Um, telephony service is that global command. It's the same as you know Voice Register Global, but of course for Skinny. No auto reg e phone. By default, Skinny phones will attempt to do auto registration. Um, and I don't want it to do that. I, I, I want to hand code all of my phones. And again, in SRST environment, I wouldn't want to do that, but your choice. Max phone, e-phones, max DNs, IP source address, all of the same sorts of commands I needed for SIP, time zone, and dial plan pattern. Like with SIP, there are a lot of additional commands that I can do, but these are sort of the basics. And like with SIP, I can say show telephony service. And lo and behold, oops, went too little too far there. Um, uh, right, and then you go again, DSCP markings, max e phones. Notice this section here, max uh, DSP firm units zero, transcode session zero, conference software. Those three commands are going to come into play when we deploy the conference and transcode resources in the next um, session. What this is saying right now is that the iOS software in the router is going to handle any conference requests we have. We're going to say when we get to these um, devices, we get you know set the stuff up conference hardware, and we will be um, registering DSPs to Skinny because that's how you know, DSPs register these days. I understand Cisco is uh, planning to change the DSP application to SIP at some point, or at least add that as a possibility. Um, but for the moment, this is why you need the Skinny CME, even if you're not running Skinny phones. And, you know, like with Skinny, or like with SIP, uh, network locale, user locale, date time format, and timers. Those are uh, among the things that I can do in um, uh, templates as well. So just, you know, taking a look at that. All right, we have Skinny and SIP CME running. Let's add some phones. Voice register DN. Before you build a phone, you have to build a number for it. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but SIP phones will not register if they don't have a directory number on them. Um, they, that's part of the registration process. The, a SIP phone will register its device and it will also register its numbers. Skinny phones can totally register without a DN on them, but not SIP. So how do we do this? We create a voice register DN. Number 53003, call forward B2B UA busy. What is the number to which a busy condition should be forward? So, you know, if a, a phone ends up in busy condition, we would want it to roll to voicemail. That's that number. I don't have it deployed. I'm just using it as an example. <clears throat> Excuse me. Could also be go to a router, could be a hunt, wherever you want it to send it. Ditto with call forward, B2B UA, no answer. Timeout 15. Without that timeout command, it will still ring forever because there is no no answer condition if I don't have a timer on that. So that's what that's for. Name Andre Madison. Guess what? That's going to give me caller ID. Hunt stop channel two. That along with the command on the phone itself 
uh, those two commands work together to give me busy condition. This is saying that I've got two channels for um, for inbound calls. Additional channels will be, um, uh, you know, given you know inbound calls will be busy condition. So busy trigger. Now voice register DN one a SIP DN gets up to fifty channels on its IP address on its DN on its voice dial peer. Not true with skinny DNs but is true for SIP DNs. So let's go put these into this command into our um, router. And the MWI, again, I'm just doing for uh, you know demonstration purposes. I don't have a CU, CUE configured here. So there we go. And I do have two phones I'm registering. So I happen to have a second number. There we go. I now have two numbers, two different people. Alrighty then, what about phones? SIP phones in CUCME are voice register pools. This is pool number one. How do I want to identify this? what belongs to this pool? In the case of physical phones, generally speaking, our ID is going to be a MAC address, but IDs can be IP addresses, they can be other things. And um, in the case of something like SRST, the ID can be not just an IP address, but a range of IP addresses like a subnet. So all devices with that subnet can register to this pool, that kind of thing. Here's my session transport TCP. Again, I'm doing it globally, so I don't have to have it here. That's just for you know demonstration purposes. Type, number, and the ID MAC. Those are the really the three key things here. You know, which phone is this pool? What type of phone is this pool? At what number should I put on it? The rest of this is optional, but recommended. The session transport TCP, if you don't have it declared globally. Busy trigger per button two, again, gives me my busy trigger condition. DTMF relay, RTP NTE is the de facto standard these days for SIP, um, but you can have it also fail over to SIP KPML. If you have a CUE uh, implementation, um, there are some specific, um, uh, what's what I'm looking for, uh, requirements for, for DTMF for the CUE process itself. So look into that. Username and password required for a, a SIP phone. Now, username could be admin, password, admin, doesn't matter. It does have to be different on the different phones. What this is doing is two things. Number one, if you are going to be providing the end user GUI for people on CUCME so they can like set up their own speed dolls or whatnot, they would, this is, you know, how you set their username and password. Also, the physical phones themselves, if you want to get into the administrative uh, menuing on the physical phone, you have to put a username and password. Guess what that is? That's what that is. You can declare a, a sort of a generic one in, um, um, voice register global, but if you have individual users, this is not a bad thing to do. Description. This is going to give me my um, external phone number mask. If you think about, you know, a phone on call manager, you've got your buttons, right? And then up here somewhere, it's going to have that 10 digit number that's populated by the external phone number mask in CM. This is how it's populated in CUCME. Codec G711 ULaw. The SIP phones are VoIP dial peers. They will use G729 by default. If you need to have the phone talk to a skinny phone, if you need the phone to talk to a um, uh, you know, ISDN circuit, let's say, you'll want to have it be using uh, G711 ULaw. So it's not a bad, bad idea. I mean, if you think about it, all these devices are on a LAN sort of by definition or should be. Um, so there you go. No VAD. Not a bad idea. Again, for call manager express devices, not necessarily required. I like to include it. And then again, this particular device, a 9971 does have camera and video. So let's add these commands into our router. And as before, I also have a phone for my other user. So let me grab that stuff too. 
There we go. We now have DNs and phones in SIP CME. Let's take a look at Skinny. Like with SIP, I want to create my DNs first. Very, very similar configuration. Instead of voice registered DN, it's ePhone DN. Number one, it's a tag number, an octo line. By default, ePhone DNs have a single channel, which means not only no call waiting, but no transfer, right? No conference. So I can say um, dual line or octo line. Octo line, you know, as the name implies, means I can have eight channels here. So I can have um, eight calls going. You know, there's nothing in between two and eight. Um, so eight's not a bad idea. What is the number? What is the description? Again, there's my external phone number mask. Um, that is done on the phone in the case of uh, SIP CME. It's done on the DN in skinny CME. Caller ID, no answer conditions, and there's my hunt stop channel. Let me get Jeff's number in my call manager express deployment. And then my Susan line. Oops, that's an extra typo. Excuse me. There we go. Now we have DNs, we're going to want to have phones. Oops. Oh my goodness, did I not include the phones? Oh, that was dumb. Um, um, momentito. So here we go. ePhone is how we build a skinny CME device. Notice I don't have a lot of commands in here. It is not nearly as complicated as the SIP phones. Um, there's not as much going on either. Um, we will be fleshing these out more, both the skinny and the SIP CME uh, devices with speed dials and addition, additional button mappings and such. So um, let me go ahead and get uh, these into my router. And you know, MAC address, uh, there are again, other ways you can do IDs on e-phones, but it's much more limited it's skinny is a lot less flexible with regards to CME than SIP is. So here we go. There we go. Oops, don't want that in there. Okay, this is additional button mappings. We'll get to that when we get to the features in particular. All righty then. So now, before I try to get the phones to register, I'm going to need to create their config files. In Voice Register Global, that command is create profile in telephony service, that is um, create CNF files. Now in the case of SIP, the, the files are saved individually. In telephony service, you're gonna get one config file for everybody or one config file per phone model. In a production environment, it's recommended to have one config file per phone, but rather than having it clutter up my um, flash, um, you know, the, the root of my flash, I can put it in a folder. You can also have it in flash two. You can put it on USB drives, wherever you want to put those config files, as long as they are available. So let me get these in here. Voice register global, create folk profile. Okay. And then my telephony service. Oops. I may not have to show flash. Okay. I don't have that formatted correctly and I'm not sure what I did. So I'm just going to leave it be for now. So let me. Try that again. There we go. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to go figure that. I'm not sure what I did there. All righty, because the folder is definitely is there. Okay. Now what we need to do next is reset our phones. I'm going to go do this by hand. Let me, I'm going to go um, pause my, um, my recording and I'm going to go reset the phones. In the meantime, if I would like, we, we saw the uh, voice register global and show telephony service. Um, show voice register pool allows me to see 
specifics about a single phone. Same thing, show ePhone registered. That gives me um, a list of all of my devices and basically all of their configs. Debug ePhone uh, register, debug voice register events. If for some reason you think your devices are not getting their config files from the TFTP server, debug T TFTP events is also sort of the go-to. So let's start with debug ePhone register. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to manually reset my phones here. And we'll watch them come back in. I don't know if that's set. There we go. Oh, it looks like one of my phones had registered already. Let's give it a sec and I'll come back here momentarily. You can also do a reset under um, uh, telephony service. You can reset all, you can reset a specific MAC address. You can reset a specific phone type. I don't know my MAC address is handy at the moment. Oh, good. Now it's registering my, shoot. Um, debug voice red. Well, you know what I'll do for that? I will just uh, unplug these and reset them. All right. Waiting for my phones to register here. I'm checking the, um, The status messages to see if there maybe there's a problem here. It says it has a TFTP error, which I'm not quite sure why. Let me check this out momentito. Shoot, it was just a matter of time. So it is totally working here. And my phones are online. So my skinny phones are online and I can do a show e-phone registered. And I can see a list of my two phones that I have here, their MAC address, what phone numbers are on them, what their IP addresses are, et cetera, et cetera. Codex. And um, now I'm going to do the same thing for my SIP phones. And I'm going to go in and reset them. Settings menu, administrator settings. I'm just going to reset the one device, and we'll see this here in a minute. The other device is already registered. You can see it unregistering here, unregistration, right? Deleting its keys. When we are done with the registration process, the last thing I want to show you before we end this particular session is I want to show you the um, dial peers, right? I said that there were virtual dial peers for the skinny phones and virtual dial peers for the SIP phones. I want to make sure that I get you, give you a chance to sh see those. There we go. Here's voice register pool one, MAC address. Um, DNs that are on it, what kind of phone it's running, what firmware version it's running, DTMF signaling, video and camera is enabled. I could make a video call, wish I could show you that. Um, KPML signaling, et cetera, et cetera. Dial peers created. I can see right here, it's showing me the dial peer created for this particular phone. It should be noted that because we have the dial plan pattern command in there, it's also uh, showing me the, um, the, the, the a larger version of that DN as also a VoIP dial peer.
So here we go. Um, so, oh gosh, I always forget the order of this one. Show dial peer voice summary. Is that it? Nope. Show dial dash peer voice summary. There we are. Um, let me ambiguify this so it doesn't roll. There we go. Okay. So I've got a couple of dial peers in here just for uh, you know PSTN dialing, right? And then um, here are the skinny dial peers. Again, I've got a dial peer for the uh, DN on the phone itself. And then because of the, um, the, the dial plan pattern command, it is not about the description where it gives it that uh, external phone number mass. It's the dial plan pattern command that also has it map the um, DID number to the port. And notice this is a POTS port for the skinny phones. Here are the dial peers in the 40,000 range for my SIP CME devices. And again, with the dial plan pattern command, I see not just the DN, but also the, um, the uh, uh, DID number. And it shows me what IP address is important numbers it's going to use to signal. And that brings us to the end of this particular session. Um, thank you for coming. I hope that was useful. Uh, and uh, just as a reminder, I'm going to be doing another session here later on today with um, talking about the deployment of transcode and conference resources and meet me and ad hoc conferencing and whatnot. And then we're also tomorrow going to be doing one on features. And I hope I see you there. Have a great day.